Hey y'all, welcome back to Harmon Homestead. Today I'm in the kitchen. Y'all have asked and I'm trying my best to deliver. We are going to do some recipe videos. Now, this looks like a food haul. It is not. This was hauled out of my freezers and my pantry. So I am going to show you how to make freezer meals with pantry staples. Nothing special required. You do not have to go to the store and buy a bunch of things to make pantry freezer meals. Guys, I've told you I've been hunting lately and I've learned really quick when you're out in the woods until sunset and then you're late getting home, you don't have time to cook. I cook daily for my kitchen. By the way, do y'all just love this Christmas kitchen? It's like a 50s retro diner. So I go all out for Christmas. That may be one of our videos is doing a Christmas tour of the home. But anyways, back to the subject. I need meals quick. And so what would be great is to have them ready in the freezer and pop them in the oven when I get home, especially if I'm out with my husband. So to try to save a little time, this requires nothing but basics. So today, I'm going to zoom in and show you that everything that I've got here and what we're using, I am going to do a turkey noodle casserole. It's just like tuna noodle casserole, but it's with turkey. I am going to do a turkey Mexican bake. Very easy. I am going to do an egg casserole. I have an abundance of eggs. Guys, if you can't get rid of your eggs, this is a good way to use up a lot of these. And then I am going to do turkey and scalloped potatoes, like ham and scalloped potatoes, but use turkey. Reason being is I have a ton of turkey left over from Thanksgiving. I always freeze it. We're going to put it to use. So this table is going to get us all of those meals. I am using regular glass baking dishes. I am going to cover these with aluminum foil, tin foil as we say down here in Alabama. So it's going to be very easy. All of this, I would say put in the oven at 350, for an hour to an hour and a half, you'll know it's done, okay? And all of my meat is pre-cooked, so that's even better. Okay, guys, so check it out. First things first, I have two Ziploc bags of turkey. This is already pre-cooked. I am going to spread this thin throughout these casseroles. A lot of these, I won't use a lot, but I've got two little bags here. I ended up with four total after Thanksgiving. I've got cheddar cheese back here. I have two frozen blocks of hot dogs. I showed you that in my stock up now video where I had hot dogs in the freezer. I got these on sale, put them in the freezer. I'm going to use this in my breakfast casserole. Okay, it's a good way to use these hot dogs up. I've got to clear out freezer space. Next, a block of cream cheese, pantry staples, y'all. A bag of black beans, that's for our Mexican bake. Two cans of mushroom soup, if you make your own, that's fine. Leftover mac from Thanksgiving, okay, elbow mac, but I am actually going to make my own today in the midst of all this. Some sour cream that's, guys, it's half used. We've used it, I'm just gonna use a little bit of it. Milk, I've got milk expiring tomorrow. It's still good, but I've got half of this gallon, so I'm going to use the milk up. This is how you save money. Use it and then freeze it. If you can't use it by the time it expires. Two quarts of home cam potatoes. I've got a pint of salsa, and some of this is optional, guys. Some of it's totally optional. Home canned corn, and then I just found this in the back of my pantry. I said, let's use this up, a can of refried beans. There is no specific recipe I'm using for this stuff. I'm going on the fly. I'm doing this easy. Y'all can do this. There's nothing to it. Eggs galore, galore, okay? By the way, those are Starlight Green Eggers and Blue Lace Red Wine Dot Eggs. We've got a video coming out on the Starlight Green Eggers. Those come from Tractor Supply. Those lay a humongous green egg. It would put a Rhode Island Red to shame, okay? Now, spices, pepper, okay? We have chili powder. I'm making my own taco mix. Ground cumin, this stuff. If you want anything to taste Mexican, to me, it needs to have that in it. I learned that canning salsa this summer. Go use smoked paprika. I've got it on the shelf. Guys, if you want to cook and cook well, have some spices. Dill weed. Need that. And then onion powder. And I'm going to use minced onion as well. I just don't have it on my little table here. So I've got all this. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it. First thing that I'm going to do is go on and cook my black beans. Now, y'all, if you don't have an Instapot, you need to get one for the strict fact of cooking beans. These will be done in less than 30 minutes from dry. There's no pre-soaking, nothing. That has been a game changer for me here on this homestead, and especially you preppers, if y'all buy beans, 
you need to rotate through your stock every so often to get the Instapot. It cooks them up quick and it's easy, okay? So out of this one pound sack, we're gonna have at least two casseroles. I may end up having to add more turkey, I don't know, but since this is the longest cooking thing, I'm gonna go on and put him on now. Put bag in here. For every, if you see a bad piece, get him out. For every cup of beans you need, two to three cups of water. You want your water level pretty high in this. One last ingredient, I forgot to tell you guys. Flour, all purpose flour, you will need that. I am making my pasta this morning. I'm going to dehydrate it to replenish this and I need more pasta on the shelf. It worked out beautifully to dehydrate pasta. It's so worth it guys, you, you make it, it's raw. You put it in the dehydrator, you dehydrate it, put it on the shelf, boil it when you're ready for it. Next, I'm going to take some of my elbow macaroni here and put it in boiling water. Get that ready for the noodle casserole. Okay, so now we're gonna get everything ready for our turkey noodle casserole. So I've boiled the pasta over there. It's drained, it's ready. Now I'm gonna mix everything up. So I am going to double this because we're doing two casserole pans. So I am going to use two cans of cream of mushroom soup that we've had in the pantry. And guys, if you stock, if you do a prepper pantry like I do, I think it's just a sense of security knowing you have all of this food. You don't have to go and buy it. You can put up your own food from staples that you have. So instead of buying pre-made stuff, you can make this by hand. I'm going to use a little bit of sour cream. That should work. All right, about a cup of milk. Cheddar cheese. Not too much, we're gonna put more on top. If you've got Ritz crackers, you can use that as well, or French fried onions. I just am gonna use cheese today. Now, I'm going to use onion powder a good bit. Pepper. And dill. This really kicks it up a notch with this casserole. So we're gonna stir this up. This is what is going to go over our noodles and in with them. That looks good. Now we're gonna put this over our pasta. Now on one round of this, I'm going to go on and cook tonight. So I'm gonna set my oven to 350 and do the other as freezer. Now just stir all of this together. Oh, it smells so good with that dill, y'all. You can use any pasta you want. This is just what I had on hand. We're trying to make do. If we don't have it, do without. That's the whole point of really great depression cooking. That's what this is. It's just using what you have. I love Pyrex, guys. I collect all of their patterns. Love it. That's from the 80s or 70s. This is from the 50s. Hearts and then harvest. I'm gonna pour I'm gonna divide it up in halves. Okay. Now, if you wanted to add your meat to it in the center, that's fine in this bowl, or you can add it in the pans. It really doesn't matter. All right, y'all. So I have put my turkey in here. It's in little chunks everywhere. And then I have used one block of cream cheese, just chopped it up in between the two. Now, if I was just making supper for me and my husband, I'd probably use the whole thing. But now, just stir it all in. There's a big chunk of turkey I couldn't get broke apart. Again, if you've got freshly cooked, this is that's the time to do it. But I had all this frozen, so it is what it is. Okay, we're going to mix it up. It does not have to be perfect because it's all going to melt. Take the deal again, and we're gonna go back over this. Just like that. Pretty heavy, again, especially if you don't want it to taste like a casserole. Now, go back with the cheese. This is like a deluxe casserole, how I do it. You're gonna take it and just go all over the top. Again, if you've got Ritz crackers, that's great. I think I'm gonna put some on for tonight, but not, um, not the freezer one. Okay, so him I'm gonna plop in the freezer, him I'm gonna put in the oven. A good tip, write on your casserole what it is, especially if you're doing a lot in the date, that way you'll know 
that when it's good or not. Okay, I used mine within a couple of months. We're gonna use this fairly quickly. It's just a quick dish to have for dinner at All night. All right, guys, our turkey casserole is almost done in the oven. It smells amazing in here. Our beans just come out of the Instapot. If you hear something, I am dehydrating my pasta. I've been doing that in the meantime, and I just took these out of the pot. They are hot. So let's make our turkey Mexican casserole. I am going to open one can of home canned corn. I am going to drain this. I'm gonna put it in here. Remember, this is for a double batch. Salsa. Save your canning lids. You can use those on jars for dehydrated food. It does not have to be pressure sealed. You can get a vacuum pump to pressure seal your jars of dehydrated food. And we're going to invest in one of those. Okay, I'm gonna pour the whole thing in here, y'all. The whole thing. I'm going to add our spices. So, I'm gonna start out with my ground cumin. And you want a good bit. Remember, we're doing a double batch. Just go eyeball it, okay? Chili powder. A good bit. Now, I've made this before and put biscuits over it, and it was amazing. You can do that with um, biscuits. That's fine. Smoked paprika. Give it that smoky flavor. Onion powder. I use the same stuff over and over. You could use garlic if you want to as well. A little bit of pepper. Now we're gonna mix this up. Don't y'all just love my Christmas spatula? I love Christmas here. Okay, so we're gonna add our turkey as well, but I like to try to just get this going a little bit. Look at that. Oh! So I grew the corn, I made the salsa, I grew everything in the salsa. The only thing I bought was the black beans and the spices, but we're just gonna amend that this year. We are going to have an herb garden this year coming up. So it's kind of liquidy from the beans. That's really perfect what you want. Now I'm going to add my turkey and some cheese. That sour cream we had where we just used a little bit earlier, put the rest of the container down in this. That much, not much, okay. Again, using scraps. This is how gumbo came to be. This is how jambalaya come to be. People used what they had in their kitchen. And it worked out. In the meantime, before I go any further, I'm gonna put about two to three cups of milk on the stove, have it warming up on a low bowl. We're gonna add flour to it. That's for our scalloped potatoes. Our casserole is done, but I am going to leave this on 350 because we're gonna bake our eggs next. Guys, this is, you have to keep rolling in the kitchen. So let's see how it looks. Woo so that's supper tonight. I'm gonna put it in the fridge. Look at that. It's just, a greasy, fattening mess, but it's delicious. I'm going to use a little bit of cheese, not too much. Cut my timer off. It looks like a lot, but it's not It's not like one casserole. Usually I use about two cups of casserole. Give it a quick stir. I like to stir as I go. Some people don't, but I kind of do. Oh, it smells like just the best nachos ever. And don't forget, we've got this coming up too. Now we're going to add our turkey. I am going to shred this up fine, and we're going to use a very scant amount, okay? Not a lot, just a little bit. I'm making do with what I have. I have a small quart zip bag full, and I've got to make it last for the rest of these recipes. Stir it all in, and still, that looked like a little bit of turkey, but guys, it goes a long way. And remember, this is for two casseroles. Okay, so it looks terrible. I know. If you had two cans, you could spread it. I don't have enough to do that. I just divvied it up between the two. It's going to add filler to it and more flavor. So now I'm going to take this. And we're literally go going to pour it on top. The smell of this stuff, y'all. Oh my goodness. Just. Pour it down in there. Very good. Spread everything over those refried beans. Cheese on top. That's it. We're gonna put tin foil on it and put it in the freezer. So that's one, two, three, four casseroles we've made this morning. Easy peasy quick. 
freezer meals. Now, I'm going to do the scalloped potatoes with turkey and we're going to do our breakfast bake that we'll probably be eating at night with the hot dog. I brought you over here to my milk. It's not boiling yet, but it's starting to crackle on the top. So I am going to go ahead and add my flour, all purpose flour. I'm using two thirds of a cup. I want this pretty thick, okay? So we're gonna put it in there. You're making almost a roux or a gravy. Okay guys, so everything's ready on the stove. I have cheese, turkey, dill, minced onion, and two quarts of drained potatoes. So I'm gonna start half of a quart in each baking dish. Just layer it with potatoes like that. And I'm just gonna do one at the time. This is usually a pretty big meal, okay? So you want a big baking dish. So that's one quart. Now we're going to add turkey and cheese. Okay, at this point, before I do the cheese, I'm probably gonna add the milk mixture, but I'm going to go on and add my minced onion. I go liberally with this, I like it. So just flavor everything up. Then your dill, go heavy on dill, guys. I'm telling you, it's, it's great to cook with, especially if you grow it and it just makes stuff not bland. Next, milk mixture, a little bit in each casserole dish, about a quarter of the pot, because we're gonna half the pot. Half the pot goes on now, half the pot goes on at the end. Pour a little bit. If you've got flour chunks in it, that's okay. It'll all thicken up. Okay. See, everything looks kind of rough and then it starts coming together. All right, now we're going to go with our cheese. If you notice in these recipes, everything is kind of the same ingredients over and over and over. You, I drained this one the best I could. You, I kind of get them layered out. Now, I call this scalloped potatoes, but I can mine in chunks, so that's why it's just chunked canned potatoes. Pop at the end. This is why I added so much flour. I want this to beef up and make a huge, thick casserole. Onion. Add pepper. All right, last but not least, we're going to do our egg bake. So I boiled the hot dogs, got them prepared. This casserole you want cooked, and then once it's cooked, you put it in the freezer. So I've got my hot dogs there. I put some minced onion on top, some pepper, and some more dill. I use dill everywhere, okay guys? Now, I'm gonna bring you to me and show you these eggs. So these are a little bit shy of three dozen. I showed you one carton in the beginning, but I'm doing a triple batch of this. We've got three casserole pans. So this is just what I had. I didn't show you this in the beginning, but I've got green cayenne pepper flakes. I'm going to put some of that in here. And then I also have some pickled peppers that I canned. I'm going to put that in there just for some spice and flavor. So to mix everything up, I've just got a fork here. And that's a lot of eggs, guys. I always mix my eggs up with a fork. I don't know what y'all do. That's just what I do. Guys, you feel so accomplished doing this. It takes a while to prep this much food, but we've got six casseroles and now it's gonna be three more, so nine out of this this morning. And that will feed us. Now you can supplement stuff in between the casseroles or you can eat frozen casseroles every night, but I've got food stocked, ready to go on my shelf. Probably a cup of milk is what I've got here. Maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, don't know. There's that. We're gonna take this beautiful mix and put it in here. I'll just throw it all together. I'm gonna put some cheese in this. I think, I bought this before Thanksgiving. I got the $16 pack of cheese. So it was, it is five pounds worth of cheese, but I've used it for Thanksgiving. I've used it for this. I've got a, a, probably a third of the sack left. Okay, so just mix it up. Just like that, get all your spices going. Look how beautiful. You could do Ritz crackers on top. You could do anything. Remember, this will rise. It'll all be good. It's just gonna go through a lot of cheese. 
All right, y'all. So the casseroles are in the oven. Today we have made nine freezer casseroles that I just come up with on the fly for recipes for basic pantry staples. I'm making use of what I have and putting it on the shelf. So if you can't go out and buy a bunch of food to put on your shelf, if you can only afford to have the staples, you can make freezer meals to have extra foods set back. You have to use it very wisely. Food is food, just don't let anything expire. Put meals back, put food back, anything to stock up. A lot of us just get a good feeling when things are stocked up. We like it, we like to have a lot of food and a lot of stuff, it never hurts. And this is really just making weeknights easier, especially if you've got children, or anything like that. I don't know if you'll have time to do all of this at once, but if you make an egg casserole, just triple it. That's just triple it and put the other two in the freezer. You don't have to do a whole day of meal planning. You can do just an hour here or double it when you're cooking supper, freeze the other one. That way you'll get ahead over time. But this is how we stock up our pantry and our home. It doesn't have to be just dried beans. I'm using the dried beans to put more food on the shelf. So just keep rotating everything. That's the key to all of this. So I hope these freezer meals will encourage some of you. Maybe you can make a little extra and put it in the freezer. Whatever you do, just keep busy. You got to stay in the kitchen, guys, and you got to get after this, especially if you're homesteading. We'll see you guys next time on Harmon Homestead.